My name is Will Walker with Crop Create, and I'm here uh, again with Shelly Hugh, uh, Shelly Hugh, and she is a, a very experienced uh, woman entrepreneur, and she has had a stellar career in both investing and uh, developing quality projects, both in real estate and other genres. So we want to talk to her today, Shelly, about your experience uh, working in. Uh, as a woman, as a woman leader, thought leader, certainly you, you know, helped close over four billion dollars in real estate transactions and other transactions at GE Capital, and then after that, even a stellar career at Bank of China. Uh, now she's launching her own uh, GP fund, which is full of value add uh, opportunities. But as a woman, both in person and evaluating projects and working in kind of a, a, a male-dominated world. Tell us some of the things that you've experienced and what makes you successful and, and uh, tick. Uh, that's, a, that's a very loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it has, I have to say that my journey in the industry has not been an easy one. Uh, and I, I would like to parallel it with uh, the series Mad Men. Mad Men was done in the 60s, the misogyny and whatnot that you've seen, uh, it's still very much existent today. Not necessarily in, um, I would say, in, in, in uh, service providing type of, or, or back house or middle office functions. So for instance, in accounting, if you're at one of the top four, you know, they've done really well with uh, female and male uh, kind of uh, e equality there. Um, and you know, I think most, even in law firms as well, I mean, most of the partners are male, but you know, you're getting more and more females, and, and there's mm -hmm. less and less kind of barriers for that. Um, and you know, and people are being a lot more cognizant of women having children, and 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 and, and, um, and you know, allowing time uh, for for that type of uh, for, for that type of um, uh, I guess. Time that you need away from work, and, mm -hmm. and anyhow, um, the so when you look at more back office service providing functions, it's, it's gotten better. Banking has gotten better, but when you're looking at the folks in the industry that actually make the real profit, yes, right. So not the profit centers, but the profit generators. So you're looking at the uh, the brokers, or you're looking at the principals, or you're looking at the CEOs, or the um, uh, you know the actual developers themselves. Not the CFOs, not the COOs, right. but the CEOs, the investment managers, um, and the chairmen. Generally, um, you'll find you know very few women. Um, and uh, and amongst uh, them, generally, it's 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 still very difficult because so many women that have gotten there um, is such a difficult struggle for them. They look at any other women as a competitor as well. So we don't have that same kind of like let's work with each other mentality. Network, good old boy network. That and the, all that, stuff. that that the men do, and so um, you know, and I understand that, please. So I've had. Plenty of women, uh, you know, down down credit me, and, and you know they're harsher to me than most of the men, mm. and uh, and you know, but I understand where their struggle comes from, and know that it's not personal, and know that it's, the attack isn't on me. The attack is from a defensive place, right? And I'm trying to defend my position, and and so then I I just it's like I think Kevin mentioned uh, mentioned kill him with kindness. I literally do that. <laughs> I just okay. I'll reach out to them with some way I can help them help them foster uh, like a, a spirit of hey we're in this together right you know we're not competing we're in right. this together we're one of the few women out there that are doing this um, that are visible let's, and the pie is big enough I mean there's plenty collab. of yeah correct collaboration success that could be right and so you know but of course I, I don't just assume Right, I mean, because that. Uh, so unfortunately, I do deal and I do deals mostly with with men, and uh, I'm always open and trying to include more more women. But um, you know, it, it takes a longer time to to woo them, <laughs> to you know, and that's that's what I found. Um, but I don't, you know, I, I still want to work in collaboration with more women. But they're just simply one. There really aren't, and mm -hmm. and the women that are have gone through such a struggle. 
to be in a position where we can be decision makers mm -hmm. um, that you know a lot of folks are very defensive mm -hmm. and, and again I don't uh, I don't uh, you know uh, fault them for it right I say. right you know well you're you're also a thought leader and uh, a keynote speaker at many conferences and many high visi visible visibility uh, conferences of, of different sorts. How do you pick or set yourself apart without being um, too aloof at some of these events and areas where you are able to command an audience of both men and women? How are you uh, able to relate to that, relate to that conference or audience to well, um, well, first of all, in the, in, when I'm on the panels, I don't speak to genders. I mean, we just talk about what we're talking about. And I think at the end of the day, um, even though there are so few women, we're all about the deals. So yes. I have to say that at the end of the day, if you can command, uh, bring a good deal, talk about it intelligently, and you, know, and you know the deal through and through, and it's a good deal, raise religion, sex, any of that falls away because everyone wants to make money. Exactly. Right? So, Profits conquer all. Right. So everyone wants to make money. So in that sense, I would say real estate has been incredibly collaborative. Mm. Now, uh, the issue that may stand is, you know, like I said, in real estate, everyone does deals with people that they know. Yeah. And myself being a woman, uh, non-white, not related to anyone, because <laughs> right? there's a lot of nepotism in our space, um, and uh, it's it's uh, it's harder to bridge those relationships and keep them going. Like for instance, uh, I don't get that many invites to golf to golf with the, mm. all the boys, right? I don't get the invites to those uh, yacht parties. Uh, where they hire all those girls, right. <laughs> like I don't get those type of invites, and and uh, um, I will get other types of invites, um, and uh, it's just you know that's like when you have a lot of the literally boys locker room, like at the different gyms at Equinox or whatnot, uh, at Pacific Club, anywhere you're at, um, a lot of the guys talk in the gym. Right? right, and the women is a completely different, different section. Area. Right, and you can't go to spas together. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's it's just all of those different things make it very difficult for women to get in the game. And if you're constantly with all the guys, uh, you have I have to make the effort. The guys aren't making the effort for me, right? Yeah. No, <laughs> and so. I have to do it in a way where it's still like cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> where no, I'm not overly pushing. But at the same time, uh, no, like, like include me, you know? Like, the only reason why I'm not being included is because I'm a woman. So that, yeah. that is kind of the issue with, um, you know, that's what really gets a deal over the finish line. Mm -hmm. you know? And I must commend you and tell our audience, too, uh, because you have had such a stellar, successful career, even now with your with your new GP fund and with the quality projects and deals you're putting in there, they're extra fully vetted. They, like I say, like you've been telling us, they come from places where you already know the sources and are already having some uh, assurance of pros prosperity and profit. So you're really having to be, I would say, twice as sharp and twice as sure as you move through your whole career to have this kind of success background and enjoy the type of uh, uh, pulpits and speaking engagements and also success that you've had. So I want to commend you for that. Anything else you want to touch on for um, being a woman leader, thought leader, and entrepreneur and moving forward and looking ahead? Anything you want to um. talk about there? So I would say, um, well, in terms of, of the women, uh, I I really would have uh, I would really hope that we can collaborate more together. But uh, it has been pretty tough. So unfortunately, the only people that I am collaborate, co collaborating with are, are men, which is fine because that's the industry. I'm just 90 some odd percent men. There's very few uh, women that I can collab with in the first place. Um, but I would love to collaborate with more women. Um, and, you know, I, I think it sets a great example going forward for our daughters. And most of the men that I know that I work with have at least three daughters. Mm. So, there so, you go. 
So they've they, got a vested interest. They want their they want their daughters to do what I do. Yeah. You know, versus, you know, maybe what their wife does. Right. So, right. No, it makes so, sense. So. Um, so, you know, I, I work with a lot of really good men that I that's do work great. with. And, and I think that's, that's a telling sign as well, is that it's very hard for me to work with a misogynist. Mm -hmm. It just is. And mm -hmm. so, yes, there are misogynists in our community, absolutely. There is in every community. But I probably wouldn't be working with them. Yeah. Yeah. If you had one or two things that you could, I know there's many that you could tell young women that may be looking at you and should be looking at you as a thought leader and a... Uh, 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 certainly an entrepreneur of high standards. What would you tell them to do as far as looking at a, a career as a, you know someone who would be a successful investor or a developer or um, producer of any kind? Is there any uh, specific uh, rules or thoughts you might have as far as what they could learn and getting some more practical experience or you know, finding a, a mentor of some kind like yourself? Right, so um, I always wished that I had a mentor. Uh, I never really had one. I had a lot of people that were great, but no one that just took me on as a mentor. I think that's really important uh, to have. Uh, but you know, not everyone gets it, it's fine. You just make your own experience. But I would say really uh, the first step in, if you wanted to get involved in real estate is, or it could be in banking, is just really know your underwriting. Really know the numbers mm. and the models and how to look through markets and how to read through the different books and be able to capture that deal from mm. a technical standpoint first. Because that's, that's really, that's the, the meat of anything, yeah. right? That's the absolute meat of what You know your stuff, it doesn't matter who you are, you know your stuff. Right, right, That's well, and, but personality also takes a very big, mm. because there's there's a lot of different places that you can work within a company. You know, if you're more of you know an introvert and you don't like to be around, it's not your comfort, and, and you're just really great at being like an independent contributor, then really hone in. People make really good livings um, being a risk officer, being a CPA, being you know just uh, just chugging through and getting their work out as an independent contributor mm -hmm. a lot of lawyers and you know a lot of folks are very successful at doing that and so just know who you are as well if you're more of a people person yeah. and maybe the numbers don't interest you as much there's a pure business development position for you right uh, where you don't need to know the numbers and you just bring them in and introduce them and that's that's just your entire role but you can make a very good living doing that as well and then there's people like myself which is more or less in the middle where I know the deals I can speak the deals um, and and my personality is more you know, I'm just a very gregarious type of personality. So uh, people generally like to talk to me and mm -hmm. expose lots of things about their deals that they probably normally wouldn't. Right. <laughs> um, because I work off of a base of integrity and honesty, and, and I think that translates. And so then, uh, so then the, the trust is pretty much built pretty quickly because I'm not gonna work on a deal that I don't believe in. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, that's great. Well, do we have any last words that you'd like to impart for our future entrepreneurs and successful developers out there? And um, focus on the underwriting, and mm. then, uh, and then, and then you'll fall into where you fit in based on your personality. Great, Shelley. Yeah. Wonderful. Again, thanks for your time. Look forward to our next visit. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, everyone.